Welcome back, friends and outlaws. It's time to look at thermodynamics one more time. Today we're going to work a manometer problem, and I don't know about you, but I can't say that without thinking about the Muppets manometer. Manometer. Never mind. Okay, here we go. It's a manometer problem. Let's start off looking at this guy. We have a U-shaped manometer, okay, and it's open to the atmosphere, okay, and we're given a few things about this manometer. So this, the blue, Right, this area in here, we should have made that waves because the international sign of water is waves, right? Okay, this is water, H2O. This over here, the orange, not on high, is oil. Okay, so we've got, and we all know, we should know, right, because when the Exxon Valdez crash or we have an oil spill, what happens to the oil? What does it do? It floats on top of the water. What does that mean? That the density of oil is less than the density of water. So the density of oil, which is a lighter material, is here in this heavy column of water has caused the oil to raise up on one side, okay? So we have a, a, a particular column of water here, which we're gonna call H1, and they tell us that it's 46 centimeters. And then from the bottom here, if you came across from the same height of oil over here, like, it doesn't matter how long this tube is this way, but that same height of oil over there is what we're after. So, what is H2? So, H2 equals question mark. That's what we're looking for, okay? Find H2. They give us the specific gravity of the oil, and they give us specific volume of water, okay? Which, we may need to solve this problem. So, let's see if we can set this problem up and solve it. And just like in statics, the first thing we're going to do is, guess what? Draw a free body diagram. Okay, so here we go. So I have blue representing the water. Okay, so there's, there's that column of water right there. And then the orange will represent the column of oil. Or we say in Texas, oil. Okay. And now we're going to put some forces on that. So what kind of forces would be acting on that free body diagram? Okay, so here we go. And remember the force, remember uh, pressure is equal to force over area. So we can think of this as uh, force is equal to P times A, okay? Well, that, that black is not very good. So we have here... Number one, if I take the pressure in the oil at this level right here, all the way across, okay, the pressure here and the pressure there at the same height in the column of oil, right, think about all this oil down here, the pressure has got to be the same because it's all equalized, right? This thing is, has uh, settled out. And so what we have here is we have this, okay, we have P times A. And we could call this oil. Okay, that was the pressure in the oil at the level where we could it. P, poil, times A. Okay? Now, what do we have on the top of this up here? What's mashing down up here? What's the force that's being applied up here at the top? Well, the force up there is, right, it's P times A again, but this time, what's the P come from? Well, it's A for atmospheric, okay? So P, A, A, okay? Now, why do I have the A in there? Because, you know, this thing could have a different diameter. If, it did, if I had a one size orifice over here and I had a different size over there, then that A would be important, right? But so, because it's a force over an area, right? So if that area varied, then that might be, then I might need to call this area different than that. But since this tube is constant all over, we can call it the same thing and get away with that, okay? Okay, so there's our forces acting on the column of the oil. Is there anything else? What do you think? Anything you can think of? Nothing? What about, what about the weight? Okay, so here we have the weight of H2O. And over here we have the weight of oil. Okay? And there you go. Now that's a good free body diagram. So we have the forces pushing down on from the atmosphere. We've got the, the weight of the column itself. And all of those things are being countered by the force that the oil is exerting back on it. The same thing over here, okay? 
So well, the nice thing about this is this is the same as that. So if we write an equation of equilibrium for this system and an equation of equilibrium for this system, we'll probably be able to set those two things equal to each other, and then maybe we can solve for that H2. Now this guy we know here is 46 centimeters, okay? That's the column of the water height. But this guy over here is just unknown. That's what we're looking for, H2. So let's see if we can write an equation for these guys and, and, uh, and if that tells us anything, okay? So system number one, we'll make this number one and we'll make U number two, okay? So system number one, let's write the equations of equilibrium for this guy. So here's what I have. P oil times A is equal to so the up stuff has got to be equal to the down stuff, right? So you got to be equal to uh, the weight of H2O um, plus P atmospheric times A. There you go. And system number two, same thing. P oil A is equal to, what? there's an up stuff, what's the down stuff? That guy and that guy. So W oil um, plus P A times A. Okay? So do we have the weight of the water? Don't have it. We got it in another form. So let's see if we can manipulate these W's and maybe we can figure this out. So let's rewrite that equation one more time. Okay? What is weight? Well, weight is, let me think here for a second, it's um, volume, right? Volume times density uh, times G, right? It's gravity. So plus P A A. Volume times density times gravity. Now this is density of, of uh, H2O. This is density of O I L. Okay. Um, plus P A times A. Okay. So I haven't changed anything yet. Mm, still don't have any of that stuff. So let's keep going. Let's rewrite that one more time. Okay, what can we do with this? What's volume? Well, volume is area times the height, right? So it's, that's a little cylinder of water. So the area of the circle times the height is the volume. And so I can change this guy to, for this guy, it's going to be 46 times A, right, times rho H2O times G plus P A times A. And for this guy, same thing, but I don't know the height on this one. So there's my little cylinder of water here, or salt cylinder of oil rather. And so let's see if we can solve this guy. This guy's gonna be H2 times, times A again, right? Height times the area times rho oil times G plus P A times A, okay? Okay, I think we did pretty good. So we can take now, since, since both of these things are equal to P oil times A, right? We can take this equation and that equation and set them equal to each other. So let's try that. So let's go over here. So we have 46A uh, rho H2O times G plus P, whoa, P A times A is equal to H2 times A rho oil times G plus P A times A, okay? What can we do to simplify this? Okay, here's something simple. Every single term has an A in it. And the only way we were able to do that is because that area was constant all the way across there. It never changed, did it? Okay. Um, let's see. So 46. Let's see. What do we have here? We have 46 centimeters times G plus PA is equal to H. Oh, don't put H squared. Put H2. Don't mess that up. H2 density of oil. Oil times G um, plus PA. Oh, take that PA, move it to the other side. Whoop, he becomes a minus PA, so those are going away. Um, oh, both sides have a G on them. Those go away. 
Uh-oh, I left off my row water there, didn't I? Row H2O, let's put that in there, okay? So I'm left with 46 row H2O uh, is equal to mm, H2 row oil, okay? Let's divide, let's get that over here and get him over there. So 46 over H2 is equal to row oil divided by row water. Now I did that on purpose. I don't like to have my only unknown on the bottom over here, right? But I did that on purpose so that I wound up with this because that should look similar or, or familiar rather to you. What is row of matter divided by the row of water? Guess what that is? That's specific gravity, right? And we're given right here the specific gravity of the oil, okay? Zero, uh, 0 0.93, okay? And again, right, specific gravity divided by specific gravity, so that's unitless, that's a unitless uh, uh, property there. So let's just put the H2 over this side and divide over there, so 46 divided by 0.93 is equal to H2, and so, let me get my handy dandy calculator here. And this is centimeters, right? Okay. My handy dandy calculator says 46 divided by 0.93 is equal to 49.5-ish. 0.46 centimeters. So there you go. And there's your answer. So, and we knew it had to be bigger than 46, right? So if we, if we would have got, I don't know, 37 over there, we would have said, oh, that's not right. It's got to be taller than that. So our answer sounds right. It's in the right range. I have confidence in that, okay? So the secret here is to take these things that you're given and keep expanding them and expanding them until you get them in the form that you're given, okay? So this is all about unit consistency and being able to cancel things out. Hope this helps, and I'll see you on the next problem.